Today we are going to talk about how to establish the importance of your research study. You will most often see this section called the background or literature review. This step is of critical importance to any research proposal, ethics proposal, dissertation, or publication. Be sure to check the guidelines wherever you are submitting your background to make sure you have included everything they expect. Throughout this entire section, you need to build a case for your study's purpose. Think of it like setting the stage for your research. For this reason, I normally work on writing this section of the proposal once I am clear what the purpose of my study will be. While this section may be written after the study purpose is formulated, it is important that I am engaged in the literature and know where the gaps are before I develop a purpose or design a study. But that is a conversation for another video. Your job in the background section of your paper is to convince the reader that your study is important and meaningful within your field of study. After all, you might be competing with other studies for funding. It answers the question, so what? Why should we care about this study? In this section, you need to establish what is known about your topic, clearly identify the research problem, and convince the reader that more research is needed. This section also helps to establish your own competence since it shows that you have evaluated existing literature. Start by addressing the significance of the issue under investigation. What impact does the issue have on people? Two common ways to establish significance are by talking about the scope and or magnitude of the issue. A good way to show the scope of a health problem is by including statistics about the number of people who have a particular problem. Try as much as possible to use statistics that relate to the setting of your population under study or the journal you are trying to publish in. When statistics are not available for your particular issue, focus on how much of an impact the issue has on the lives of individuals. Perhaps it is not known how many people experience an issue, but it is known how detrimental an issue is to those that do experience it. By showing the magnitude of a problem, you can establish that the study could make a large difference in the lives of those individuals. You also need to be sure you address the relevance of your study. You need to convince the reader that your study is important within the context of your discipline. As a nurse researcher, I would talk about how the issue impacts nurses, perhaps through an influence on workload, safety, or burnout. The amount of space you will have will vary depending on the guidelines you are given. However, in any of these situations, avoid being repetitive or wordy. The significance of an issue can often be effectively established in one to three sentences. These first few sentences are critical in capturing the reader's attention, so they are interested in your research. After introducing the significance of your issue, you need to discuss what is known about the topic. It is very important that you are selective and critical of the literature you choose to review. Include your evaluation of pertinent works, which may involve seminal and recent research. Each and every sentence you include needs to guide the reader on a logical path towards the need for your study. For example, if my research is addressing a gap related to limited knowledge of student perceptions on a nursing issue, I would not focus on critiquing small sample sizes or limited generalizability in existing literature. Why? Addressing a gap related to perceptions would logically lead to a qualitative study. Therefore, my study would not involve larger sample sizes or improve generalizability. Instead, I may critique that existing literature has not examined these perceptions. Every time you critique existing literature, ask yourself if the critique helps to build a case for your study. If it doesn't, reframe the critique or get rid of it. The literature review needs to be organized. Organize it in a way that makes sense for building a case for your research purpose. Often, literature is organized by conceptual categories or in chronological order. Before writing your proposal, Take a look at how other literature related to your issue is organized. Their organization may give you ideas for how to present your work, without plagiarizing of course. Particularly when there is a lot of literature on a topic, 
you need to avoid including every single study you have read. Your evaluation of the literature included in your background should give the reader a clear impression of how you will be building on what is already known. Show how your study will be different and address the gap in knowledge. For example, you may identify a gap in knowledge related to circumstances that have changed since other work was done. Perhaps your study is unique because of the setting it is being conducted in. If preliminary work or pilot studies have been done, they can be included to show the aim of your study is feasible. The literature review needs to lead to a clearly identified gap in knowledge. Think of a gap as what is not known. It is a problem that has not been addressed yet in the literature. Clearly establishing the gap is critical because your purpose needs to address this gap. Remember, your purpose statement drives the rest of your proposal, so put some thought into this step. The statement of the research problem identifies this gap in knowledge. Typically, near the end of your background section, you will lead up to the problem statement by clearly summarizing what is known about the topic. Then identify what is not known. The reason you do a research study is typically a lack or insufficiency of knowledge in existing literature. Focus on clearly identifying the gap that your study will address in a sentence or two. Your purpose statement will logically follow. Consider if you should incorporate a theoretical or conceptual framework in the background section. Some people choose to include one as part of their background section, whereas for others it makes more sense to have a separate section. If you choose to organize your literature by concepts, you may already be working on a conceptual framework for the study without even knowing it. If you are working on a proposal, there may be a separate section to include for your framework. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please let me know by liking it or commenting on it. I plan to make more videos about research proposal development if people are interested, so please subscribe to be notified when new videos are released. Now that my baby is one, I am happy to be back to making videos. Thank you.